Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other sons because he was born to him in his old age. To resort to bloodshed. I fight for what is mine. They can't steal from me. You have. You can't count. How do you think you can divide an odd number of sheep without killing one? Rather than kill a sheep, you would kill one another. Our father died and left us 15 sheep. And I, being the eldest of the family, he willed that half of them should be mine. And of the rest, half are mine. And the other half, mine. But half of the last half is mine. And that means all I get is part of a dead sheep. Counting is one thing, but to be cheated like that. So? So? It's impossible. Count them. It can't be done. Benjamin, what do you think? Now, our problem is to divide 15 sheep. And no one of you will be cheated. Benjamin, bring one of our sheep. No, put your lamb down. But Joseph, if you're going to take him away, he will die. Benjamin, put him down. Now, your father died and willed half the sheep to you. Yes. You're the eldest. Sure. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take your eight sheep. <coughs> and you get half of what is left. Yes. Here you're four. And here's your share, two sheep. And your share, one live sheep. See, no one was cheated. There, Benjamin, you have your Elia. How clever you are. No, Benjamin, how foolish they were. Come on. Come on. What is that? It's a water wheel. Someday we may help bring water to the desert. You know, Joseph, of all my brothers, I love you the most. You shouldn't say that. Our mother loved them as though they were her own. Oh, but you're different. You know everything. Joseph, will you please teach me how to understand dreams? Just close your eyes and a great light shines. Like this? Yes, like that. I don't see a light. What sort of light? Well, maybe someday when you're older. No, it's not that. It's because you're a magician. If only I could be a magician. You know, magicians and fortune tellers always end up at the courts of kings. They do. And so do the clowns. Why? Because kings are always afraid, and they need the fortune tellers to tell them what they want to hear, and the clowns to make them laugh. Then I'm going to be a clown. <laughs> oh! 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 Come along, come along. 
You know, after one year, we have 50 more sheep. Father will be very pleased. Are you tired? No. Benjamin, you are tired. There. Promise to tell them I walked all the way. Naturally. At this time tomorrow, we'll be home. Light of my years, welcome home. Father! <laughs> oh. And Benjamin, my son, how you have grown this last year. We have 50 more sheep. 50? You could count already? Joseph taught me. Bless you, Joseph. Your news has gladdened all our hearts. Welcome home, my son, welcome home. Ash, Dan, Joseph. My sons, tonight we shall feast. The finest Syrian wines will mark this homecoming. In Joseph's honor, we will kill and roast a lamb. <laughs> My son, Joseph. After all, he's been away for a year. Blessed be the true God, King of the universe, who giveth us this bread from the earth. Blessed be the true God, King of the universe, who giveth us the fruits of the vine. No, no, my son. Here, eat from my dish. Silpa? Yes? I see you haven't lost your skill. It is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> my brothers, tell me your news. Little has happened. Your other brothers are with their flocks in the south. Are they well? Yes, but their flocks have not multiplied. But father, you cannot blame them for drought. Or sickness. Drought or sickness, there's always some excuse. If the Lord wills, the sheep must die. What can we do about it? Yes, but Joseph's sheep have multiplied. Evidently, the Lord must grant him special arrangements. Do not speak lightly of the Lord. Father, it is unfair to blame us. Even now, Reuben and his brothers look for better pastures. Tomorrow, we must join them with our flocks. If you mistrust our efforts... Silence. Father, if there has been drought and disease... The good shepherd moves his flocks to distant pastures and rejects the comforts of home, even as you have done this past year. The Lord bless me with twelve sons. No man should be more content, but now that I am old, my heart is heavy. My children scorn my words. But only you, Joseph, and little Benjamin, beloved sons of Rachel, bring joy to my life. Father, you honor me. I pray to the Lord that I love all my sons equally, but the Lord does not hear my voice. I had no wish to tell you, but the other night, while sleeping under the moon, I had a dream. I have no time for dreams. Nor I. A dream is often the instrument of the Lord. Or the groaning of a full belly. <laughs> <laughs> dreams? I need all my sleep when I go to bed at night. I, I was in the field with my brothers, and we were binding sheaves. My sheaves stood upright, and my brother's sheaves bowed to mine. Naturally. And I dreamed again that the sun and the moon and eleven stars also bowed to me. <laughs> how convenient. Father, how can you allow him to talk such nonsense? My son. Do you realize the meaning of your words? Do you? I do, Father. And should I, Jacob, who is Israel, 
and all my sons bow down before you. Speak. Those were my dreams. And the meaning is clear to you. Yes, father. Truly, this is the voice of the Lord. Silpa. Yes? Bring the robe. Mother Rachel wove it. It was blessed by her dear hands. And she said, when Joseph is a man, set it about his shoulders. And I wish you could be here to see you, for now that time has come. Let this be a token of my love for you, for indeed you are the instrument of the Lord. And when you see this robe among you, you will obey its owner, because this is the will of Israel. Why don't you go to bed instead of frisking about? Joseph. Now, now. I am truly disturbed. This morning, your brothers left to join the others. They will find good pastures, Father. Yes, but I instructed them to go to the market. You would sell some of the flocks, then? Reuben is experienced. He will bargain well. Ah, uh, but I cannot rely on him. But I'd be more satisfied if I knew that you were there handling the sale. But Reuben is the firstborn, Father. Yes, but a man's age is no guarantee of his honesty. Reuben and I are brothers. Surely we can handle a sale together. But the money must remain with you. Yes, I know, I know. It's easy for you to say, Father. But Reuben will not like the idea. My trust is in you alone. You alone must be responsible. Joseph, in Bethel where you were born, the Lord came to me in a vision. He spoke of you. And through you, he will speak to our future generations. <laughs> Look at it. The future master. For the time being, he too has to bend his back. <laughs> I care nothing for dreams. The corn, the sun, the moon, and all the stars can bow down before him. <laughs> but I am still the eldest son. If the flocks are to be sold, then I'll do the selling. I dreamed an ass braid too much, so I gave it a clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard him braying. He sat on Father's right hand and ate from Father's dish. <laughs> it's true, Simeon. And talked himself into the robe which Rachel made. A dreamer's robe. A dreamer. But a troublemaker. The blood of Rachel is in that one. She dreamed of children, just as he dreams of power. The power is already his. Yes, and he wears the robe. Robe or no robe, I have decided. My father's command shall be obeyed. Tomorrow we will drive the flocks to the market. But I will do the selling, and I will carry the money home. Now say no more about it. Reuben, the dreamer. Reuben, we will leave for bet at dawn. The decision when to leave is my business. And mine. Thank you for the offer, but I have no need for your help. Reuben, I'm to take charge of the money. The money, my dear brother, will be turned over to our father. All of it? What are you insinuating? That we're thieves? I have no way of judging. Stop! Let me go! Reuben, do not deny our father's will. Is he dead? If he isn't dead, the stone gave him something to dream about.
get some water. Reuben! Reuben! A caravan! Ishmaelite, five. Get him into the bed, quick. Ali! Sebulon! Joseph! They found him! Let's go! Is this man of your company? Yes, and he's more trouble than he's worth. Uh, a slave? A useless slave. He is hurt. He stumbled and hit his head on a rock. <laughs> and you threw him in the pit. A few hours down there and he might have mended his ways. It's a lot of trouble. In Egypt, there is a demand for such fellows. He is not for sale. I would pay a fair price. Making allowance for his condition, of course. Fifteen pieces of silver. Can he read or write? Of course, yes. Now look, I'm a man of business. He's of no use to you and of little value to me. Twenty pieces of silver. Yes? Or no? morning, Father, we found his body torn by wild beasts. <laughs> His wine. From this day, you will cover your loins in sackcloth, and you will mourn as I will mourn, even, even to the grave. <laughs> oh, don't cry, Benjamin, my son. Joseph is not dead. He will be in our hearts and will live with us for the rest of our days.
Grind your knives here. Grind your knives here. Grind your knives. Grind your knives. Grind your knives. Are these all your own children? Yes, my lord. How potent these peasants can be. Get out of the way. Grind your knife. My lord, your fortune? He tells your past, Potiphar. And not only your past, and your future. My past is already well known, Rakmira, and my future is assured. The finest products of the East. Rare carpets, ointments, perfume. Slaves from Syria, slaves from Arabia, slaves from Judah. O oh, powerful Potiphar, right hand of the mighty Pharaoh, light and splendor of Egypt. What treasures I fear for you. Rare silks, jewels, the blackest pearls from the land of India. Ah, Rakmira, the mystery of a black pearl. My friend, you're a romantic. Romantic? Do you think they'd please my wife? They'd please any lady, my lord. The herbs, my lord. I haven't the faintest interest in herbs. Pearls are teardrops from the night sky. Herbs make me vomit. But the herbs are very good for you. They keep you in good health, my lord. My health is not improved by your vile brews. Wine is the blood of life. Rich red wine. Merchant, tell this fool physician that I'm right. Only wine, my lord. Exactly. You're a sensible fellow. I'll take the pearls. Look at him. But Mary has become the shadow of Potiphar. He never leaves him. That is so he can bite him at the opportune moment. Rekmira is truly a two-legged serpent. Why are there in Tanis even the very stones have ears? Let them hear. My father is correct. So long as Egypt is full of men like Rekmira, there'll be no peace for the poor people. Ah, oh, that reminds me. I need some slaves for my new vineyards. The finest in Tanis, my lord. Where does this one come from? From Syria, my lord. From Syria, eh? Ah, marked with the lash. Look at this one. Oh, well. No. Here is one from Canaan. From Canaan, eh? No. Poor quality. But this slave can read and write, my lord. A slave who can read and write. He makes excellent wine. Does he? Huh. Does he indeed? No man makes wine like a Hebrew. A Jew. You insult my high office. How dare you? You dirty! How dare you? I'll teach you! This lord filthy peasants! Yeah, it's thieves! You filthy ass! Ah. Give him hair! Give him hair! Get back! Get back! What is the worst attack yet? Potiphar! Potiphar! The end is near. Potiphar! Oh, Potiphar. my lord! Draw blood from him or he'll die! If they kill us all, I'll kill you first! I tell you, if you don't draw blood, he'll die. Stand back now, let him breathe. Stone him! He's a murderer! Uh. Oh. You go back to your house now. No. I want to see so I can remember this.
have him brought back. God. You saved my life. Thank you. Look, dear God of dreams. Today she's more beautiful than ever. Potiphar? 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 Did you find the journey tiring, my love? It wasn't the most comfortable. At our villa by the sea. I wish I could have shared it with you. It was lovely there at night, the solitude. Joseph. Yes, my lord. Well, get those scrolls out of the way, Joseph. There. Now, does this arrangement satisfy your artistic notions? Yes. I should hope so. But where's my pharaoh? Good gracious, someone's taken my pharaoh. Have you seen my pharaoh? Here it is, Good. my lord. Oh. Really? Now, the pharaoh sits there, do you see, like that, and he has an uninterrupted view of the hanging. Well, it's rather pleasant, don't you think? May I suggest something, my lord? Yes, yes. If the pharaoh sits here, he will see the hanging, and the people will see him. Oh, how diplomatic. Satisfy the gaping multitude, of course. You're right as always. Thank you, Joseph. My dear, do you know you're more beautiful than ever? You come and see my arrangement for the hanging of the second and third class nobles. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Tradition satisfied, you see, with ceremonial splendor, correctness in all things, even in death. I missed you. Yes, of course. Well, that's just a simple occupation to hide my loneliness, but now I've got you back. Just another toy to add to your collection, is that it? Black pearls, especially for you. It's very kind of you. But don't they please you? Yes. Well, then kiss me, my child. Flowers, jewels. Must it always be presents? The wife of Potiphar has only to name her wish. What is it, my love? I need to be loved. But I do love you. I love you with all my heart. Yes, Potiphar. I believe that you love me. With all your heart. But look at me. What am I? The loveliest woman in all Egypt. The unhappiest. Another decoration in your palace. Another trophy to your title. Just one of the chattels which makes you great, Potiphar. But it's not enough. But now that you're back, I'm going to give a great party in your honor. The Pharaoh himself will sit at your right hand and all our friends will... Will notice my sadness. Must you always torment me with your discontent? I can't give you anything more. I know. That's why I'm so sad. Who is he? Joseph, a slave. He saved my life. He can read and write and count. He takes care of my library and of my health. Surely that is your physician's job. Physicians. Joseph does more to cure my ailments than all those idiots put together. How fortunate. Regmira, my lord, Minister of Lands. 
Welcome home. Thank you, Rekmira. On behalf of Pharaoh. Potiphar, my friend, you must be happy to have your lovely wife back at your side. Such a villa is not complete without its mistress, like the home of a bachelor. My home is always perfectly run, Rekmira. Oh, of course. I was forgetting about Joseph. Estate manager, chief accountant, major domo, private advisor. Truly remarkable. Is that true, Potiphar? How versatile. But now you are back. I'm sure Potiphar means to get rid of him. I run my house as I please, Rekmera. Good day to you. I will give report of your beauty to Pharaoh, my lady. Goodbye. His tongue is too smooth, his ambition too obvious. I think Joseph is ambitious. A refreshment, my lady, after your long journey. The wine is from Joseph's country in Canaan. He made it himself. It's delicious. Isn't he a genius? I'm only a slave, mistress. Never let me hear you say that again. You, you saved my life. You're my friend. How extraordinary. I thought it was the master who had to beat the slave. No, my dear. It's a new form of massage invented by Joseph himself. I find it most stimulating. You ought to try it. Oh, <laughs> oh ouch! I think that's enough, my lord. I should hope so. And now some rest, master. I should think so. Joseph. Yes, my lady. I wish to try it too. Come here. Come here. Do they scratch the skin? One must know how to use them. I'm in good hands. Come on. Well, have you heard what my husband said? I don't know how we could have ever managed without you. Joseph, you have brought so many changes into our house. Now everything is so calm here. And you know my husband, Potiphar, no longer flies into his terrible tantrums. Hey, stop it, you hear me? You're the one that sinks in my house. Come here! Come here! Come to me! I knew there was someone who shoved me that snake in my house. Go away! Get away! I'll have you flogged! You hear me? I'll have you flogged! Black devil, let him be silent in this house. I'll have you flogged! Devil, you devil! Who told you you could sing in my house? I'll have you flogged! I'll have you flogged! The devil, I'll have you Ow! Ow! How dare you? How dare you? Do you think I'm a bit like insolent from a slave? Get out of here. Get back to the market. Go back where you belong. Get out. Potiphar. Joseph, come back. You, you didn't think I was serious, did you? You saved my life. Or my friend. 
Why are you wearing those clothes? Why don't you get yourself properly dressed? We're going hunting. With the pharaoh? What are you doing down there? is favorable. He won't be able to scent us. must have frightened the horses. We're much too close to the hunt. <laughs> I appreciate your guidance, Joseph, but does it also apply away from the villa? Mistress, I don't guide you in anything. Oh, yes, you do. You made me come here against my husband's wishes. I did, my lady. <laughs> You've cast a spell over me. I came riding here to be with you. Here I am. Joseph, why don't you run away? I'm not a free man. Yes, now you are. Look, over there is Canaan. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you love your home? I prefer to have my father believe I'm dead. But tell me, why? He would only mourn for my brothers, knowing they're little better than assassins. But you can't sacrifice yourself like that. My destiny is bound to my people. If God wills it, I must be a slave. But Joseph, I, I am a slave too. A slave to Potiphar. A wife is not a slave. I ask for love and children, but they've been denied me. So you see, Joseph, that's why I should run away from Potiphar. I should look for love and comfort elsewhere. Tell me, would that be so wrong? Joseph? Joseph, if only you would...
wounded. Poor little creature. He'll live. Hennett, what are you doing here? Uh, but party father, the villa seems lonely without you. Women are pathetic creatures, Joseph. Like wounded animals. Kill. Potiphar! Oh! God courses, you're a generous host. Great Pharaoh, it's an honor to have you at my table. <laughs> and you, Grand Baker, and you, Great Cupbearer, and you, my dear friend. <laughs> Permission to speak, my grace. Speak, Mary Eminence. Great King, our good Potiphar provides us a new vintage from his private cellar. And now, my lady, let's drink the blood of life in the name of your charitable lord to the greats of Potiphar. This is an insult. What is, my lord? It's an insult that such exquisite wine should be wasted on Potiphar's jaded palate. <laughs> How light and piquant. Pharaoh, our master of the wine press is the greatest in all things. Make him known to me. Well, tell me who he is. I cannot. Or you will not. He is a slave. Such talent is held in slavery. Potiphar, is this true? Uh, well, I... Yes. Uh... My husband is just going to release him. Was I? Yes. Oh, yes, 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 I was. Yes, yes. <laughs> Then do so at once. Yes, yes. By all means. Where are you? What? Oh, oh, there he is. This is our slave from Canaan. Well? Well, don't just stand there. Come here. Your name? Joseph, my lord. Joseph, we drink to your artistry. From this moment, you're a free man. Free to come and go as you please. This is our royal command. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just don't stand there. Have a drink of your own wine. Everything we have is yours to do with as you wish. Now you're a free man. Thank you for helping me, my lady. Joseph, what are you going to do now? A command can free a man from slavery.
<laughs> my child, <laughs> what's the matter, my love? Yes, it was Joseph. How versatile our Joseph. My wife in her goodness pleaded for your freedom. And your only thanks was to be free with her. Chain him. Cast him into prison. Take him away. And there all lust will be beaten from your body. Given you your freedom. Why, Why are you I'm... here? The Pharaoh's food and wine were found to have been poisoned. But we are innocent. It was our mirror. That man will stop at nothing to pay hey, your. Hold your tongue! Oh. Thank you, my son. Back to work! Dawn is breaking. Try to sleep. No. Try to remember. Tell me. There was a vine in front of me. It had three branches. It budded and blossomed before my eyes. And then the grapes ripened. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes and pressed them into it. And I gave the cup to Pharaoh. That was a beautiful dream. Then what does it all mean? The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will restore you to high office. And once again, as Grand Cupbearer, you will serve your royal master. Can, can this be true? Interpretations belong to God. And he is truth. The other night, I also had a dream. It was just as strange. I... 
I had baskets of food on my head, and the birds ate from the uppermost basket. How do you explain that? The three baskets are three days. Yes, go on. Within three days, I too should be restored to office. Tell me then. Perhaps I... I didn't tell you the dream well. You told me well. It will rain today. No man can alter the will of God. Imperial Pharaoh, and with his royal sanction, I, Potiphar, Captain of the Guard, Minister of Prisons, do hereby publish that the following shall suffer death by hanging. Defa Kameni, Royal Cupbearer, and Norman Arvnev, Grand Baker, to the Court of Pharaoh. Executioners, proceed. Far, remember my words. Rekabira also planned such an end for you. No, no, I'm innocent. I don't want to die. Have mercy. No, stop, stop. I don't want to mercy. Release him. The gods themselves have granted you a pardon. <laughs> Return with me to my house, my friend. I must also thank someone else. It was just as you said. Thank you. It was the will of God. Take him away. mustn't hate. Each day something within us dies. Only through love could we survive. The people we love live on through us. Who in this way? A man who has hope.
can't sleep, Annette. Can you, Potiphar? No. Today, by order of the Pharaoh, I arranged two executions. Must you come here in the middle of the night to tell me about that horrible thing that you've done? They were my friends, Annette. I hope they have time to thank you for your friendship before they die. Annette, two men were due to be hanged today, and one was saved. The cupbearer and I owe our lives to the same man, your friend, Joseph. I saw him today. Then, is he still in prison? Yes. Well, he deserves to suffer. Does every man who loves you deserve to suffer? Joseph never loved me. So that's why you lied to me. Because of you, I sentenced Joseph to a living death. And now what has happened to him? His God has given him strength to wait and perhaps to plan for his revenge. Revenge? On whom? On you, my pet. But I love Joseph. I always have loved him and I always will. Joseph is a man and you, you, you're yes. ridiculous. Yes, maybe in matters of love, but I'm honest. You're dishonest. You've always been dishonest. <gasps> dishonest with me, dishonest with yourself. You think you can escape my anger? <gasps> your deceit disgusts me, even as your painted mask sickens me. Go back to sleep, my love. My lord, what troubles you? I had a dream. Two terrifying dreams. Tell me, O oh powerful lord. I stood by a river. And out of the river came seven fat cows, their udders heavy with milk. And they went to pasture. Then out of the same river came 
Seven lean cows, their udders empty and wrinkled, and they ate up the seven fat ones. And again I dreamed that seven ears of corn came up from the earth. They were on one stalk, healthy and good to look upon. Then seven thin ears sprang up, and they were dry and blasted by the east wind, and they devoured the seven healthy ones, and I awoke. Minister of Dreams, tell me the meaning. Tell me. Tell me! Omnipotent Pharaoh, your dreams are strange indeed. This I could tell you, but the meaning, the meaning! I do not know. <laughs> I feel a grave danger threatens Egypt. I am the Pharaoh, and I am the destiny of my people. The whole meaning of my existence culminates in this moment. Help me! Help me now! I can have no peace until the truth is made clear to me. Call the interpreters of dreams. Send for the fortune tellers. Summon the magicians. From every corner of Egypt, bring wise men and sages. This is my command! My powerful lord. What is it? Let me speak. You have an interpretation? No, but I know the man. What man? A slave of Potiphar's, to whom you gave freedom. I did? But then he was unjustly cast in jail. And because he gave meaning to my dreams in my greatest need, I am alive to tell you. Bring him to me. Bring him to me. Perhaps he can give me the true explanation. Here is that man, my lord. His name is Joseph. Then speak. What God is about to do, he shows to Pharaoh. First, in the land of Egypt, there will be seven years of great plenty, and then all the plenty shall be forgotten, and famine will consume the land. Great king, these are inventions. For seven long years, Egypt will be deep in suffering. If such is the will of your God, what must I do? Take action now. Such action calls for a man who is discreet and wise. Let's hear more. He must be placed over the land of Egypt. To this man you must say, come with me. And he will become the moon between the Pharaoh and the shining sun of the world. Let this man appoint officers throughout the land and let them gather all the food of the good years and lay up corn under your mighty hand. Let them store food in all your cities. They must irrigate, build canals, store water, control the life-giving Nile so that her volume may be used in the hour of Egypt's need. Do all these things, great king, and your land will not perish. May Almighty God protect you and your people. My task here is ended. Rise. I thank you. Stay. Your words are good. Who among my nobles is such a man? Among all who are wise and honest, who is the man in whom the spirit of the gods dwells? 
In which of you can I place my trust? Your God has shown you all these things. Therefore you have the discretion and all the wisdom that Egypt needs. Joseph, you are the man. The divine goddess shines with the truth of this moment. will be honored by your presence. Here is your insignia of office. According to your word shall all my people be ruled. Only on the throne will I be greater than you. become the Grand Vizier, foremost spokesman for the Pharaoh, went throughout the land of Egypt, proclaiming to all that the earth should bring forth its fruits in great abundance, like the sands of the sea. Yes, Father. Your little tune reminds me of Joseph in the past. Oh, sometimes when I take the sheep to pasture, I seem to hear his voice. Oh, I'm sorry, Father, for causing you sadness. No, no, play on, Benjamin. Such memories are always dear to me. My friend, 
Now, sir, spare yourself this constant bowing. Why have you been away so long? You are the one that is always away. My tours take up all my time. So much to be done, so many difficulties. Does Rekmira still give you trouble? He will never forgive you. Don't get in his way. The Grand Baker knew the evil in him. Poor Narmer. His face still haunts my days. I can see him now. And I can see his eyes. Eyes burning with contempt. I'll never forget them, never. Azinat. Is that her name? She still lives alone, mourning the death of my old friend. Alone? Ah, yes. She sees no one. No. In the prison. He told me that only through love is it possible to survive. That we have to believe in the power of human beings. And they weren't the usual empty words of condolence. Because I saw in him such fortitude, such a sense of confidence in himself. And now he prefers to be seated on the right hand of the Pharaoh, the man who murdered my father. How can I believe him? You are unjust, I think, with Joseph. Believe me, Azanat, he is still the same man you remember. Today he is a friend of the Pharaoh's and is replacing Rekmira, where he is working as best he can for our welfare. And Rick Mary is trying to avenge himself on him, as he did with your father. Joseph is alone. We must be near him and help him. Leave me to my solitary life. We have read your petition and considered the views of the nobles who have joined their names with yours. Loyalty to you, great king, demands that you hear our voice. We are unchanged in our opinion, but Joseph remains. You are mistaken in your judgment. You have placed yourself in the hands of... Enough! Us. Go! You and your kind tax my patience. But, but Leave I... us! It is quite useless. Then we have no choice. Tonight the messenger will leave to go to the king of Syria. in your villa, and we thought we... I'm so glad that you came here. Even when I was sure that I hated you. I was unable to get you out of my thoughts entirely. The memory of your words was my only comfort. If you knew how lonely I felt. No. There are flowers that grow in the desert. Each one alone, surrounded by sand. And yet these nights, when there is no wind, they lean towards each other mysteriously and touch. In that moment, their lives have meaning. Give me your hand. May the hands which I hold in mine remain united forever.
serious news for you. We are informed that the king of Syria has invaded our borders. The invaders are plundering our crops and have begun to loot and destroy our villages. Great Pharaoh, where are they attacking? Near the floodgate in the valley. Brought to despair by the grip of famine, Neighboring peoples, aided by traitors unknown to Joseph, invaded the frontiers of Egypt in order to capture the granaries, spreading terror and ruin as they went. The right must truly be with us. We have been helped again. How has he helped us? Our villages have been sacked and destroyed. Our women and children murdered by the Syrians and their allies, and they are still here. Yes, but the sword of divine justice will fall upon their heads. Put the other one on the spit. Help me. The hour of vengeance is at hand. Tomorrow evening we will drink a toast to our victory and make an end forever to this servile and filthy people of Egypt. At last. Uh. <laughs> and Yurek Bera will have honors and posts again. Rest assured. I will hand you Joseph's head like this. <laughs> <laughs> the signal. Open the floodgates. As Joseph had foretold, the fat years were followed by the lean years. And while in Egypt there is still bread for all, famine has spread throughout all other lands, and now it has reached the land of Canaan. He must be a cruel god to let our sheep die. My son, the Lord, in his infinite understanding, has a reason for all things, even famine and pestilence. 
father, if he denies us water and our storehouses will stay empty, what can we do? My son, God in his mercy, always shows us another way. There is corn in Egypt. The storehouses are full to overflowing. Why do you look at one another? Egypt. They have famine too. Better to say there's corn on the moon. If the Pharaoh has such an abundance, you can be sure it's for his own people. He has enough for his own people and more to sell. Are you sure, Father? Yes, Benjamin, my son. In Thebes, there is a wise governor who rules in the name of Pharaoh. For many years, he has prepared Egypt against this day. And now there is corn in plenty. But, Father, why should he sell to us? Because in his wisdom, this governor has compassion on the hungry and the helpless. The borders of Egypt are open. Father, this uh, governor must be a noble man. Yes, my son. They say he is noble indeed. After Pharaoh, the greatest man in the land. And now, make haste, my sons. Take silver from the chest, prepare your caravan, and go to Thebes. Present yourselves to this governor, and make honest purchase of our needs. But the journey, father, will take many weeks. I know, my son, but Benjamin and I will be praying for your safety. Now go, Reuben, and make ready. But father, I want to go with them. Benjamin! You would remain with me. Father, I want to do my share. No, my son, your brother is dead. Of all Rachel's children, you alone remain. No harm must come to you. Go and get the caravan ready. Your request has been considered, and I grant you the food that you need. Return to Syria and relieve the hunger of your families. And when you tell your... Remember that the cost was less than when your king did war against us. Oh, powerful one. Hear our voice. You come from Canaan? We would buy food. You are spies? No, no, no. no. Oh, we are not spies, no. my lord. You've come to witness the nakedness of our land. Your servants would only buy food. We are ten brothers, my lord, with silver in our purses. Are there more of you at home? We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age. How is this child called? Benjamin is his name, my lord. Bring him to me. The boy cannot leave his father. If he were harmed, his father would die. Your words need proof. One of you will not leave Thebes until your youngest brother is shown to me. Then only shall I know that you are not spies, but speak the truth. Oh, powerful Lord, to hold one of us captive would be cruel. I see violence in your face. You shall be my security. Guards, take him. Please. Release him. Go to our storehouses and buy there. And carry corn into Canaan. For the famine in your house. But bring the one called Benjamin to me. 
or he now held in prison will surely die. Simeon have been taken from me. Why, dear God, why must also Benjamin be taken away? Benjamin will not go back with you. Joseph is dead, and he alone is left. But Simeon needs us. Father, give me care of Benjamin, and I will bring both Simeon and him back to you. And if I fail you, God strike me dead. Let me see the Egyptian corn. It's a car. Open it up. Why did he return your money to you? Why? Why did he? What is this that God has done to us? What are the motives of such a governor? To hold Simeon as security is hard and merciless. This is strange justice. This man shall have all the proof he wants. My son, you're going to Egypt. And I am going with you. But father... We will all go together. Oh! 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 Stop! Oh! Why do you punish this man? My lord, he shouts and incites the other prisoners to rebel. a cruel thing to your own brother. How can you bear to let him suffer this way? No, look at me. Look me straight in the eyes. Let me see how you were able to deceive me up to this very moment. You are no longer the man I loved. The man I loved drove hatred out of my heart. You spoke of love. And I trusted you, because your gentleness gave you conviction. Oh, that was when you really were right. Oh, Joseph, I beg you. I beg you. It was you who taught me to love. Let me teach you now how to forgive. Asenath. I alone know what I must do.
Which is the younger brother, Benjamin? May God be gracious to you, my son. Thank you, great Lord. Is this the father of whom you spoke? Yes, my lord. You are old for such a journey. No man is old when his sons have need of him. Oh, powerful lord, you demanded sight of my youngest son. Look of him now. Look. Are you satisfied? Yes, I am satisfied. His brother is dead, torn to pieces by wild beasts, as this robe bears witness. This is all the proof we can give you. My brother. O oh, powerful Lord, you have honored your word, and I am content. For many years I have favored Benjamin, even as once I favored Joseph. But if danger threatens any one of my sons, and I am afraid, then I know deep in my heart that my love is equally divided among them. Come near to me. Come. To Silver, my lord, my father did not seek charity. Let me see the stain. sold into Egypt. Oh, Joseph, my son. Forgive me for my long silence. Be not angry with yourselves. It was not you who sent me to this place, but God. And you were his instrument. God sent me here before you to save your lives by a great deliverance. And you will find sanctuary here. Benjamin, do you still want to be a clown? In the shadow of Pharaoh, you will be safe. So the seed of Israel 
shall increase and multiply. And from generation to generation, proud of their heritage, my children can walk throughout the paths of this world in peace forever.